everybody. So there was a new uh, benchmark test that has been released, and I've started paying attention to these benchmark tests as they're released because as they're released, the models do awful on every single one of these tests that get released. Uh, and then what I'll see if the pattern holds is that like within like two to three months, uh, OpenAI's next model is going to score off the charts on this test according to every other model, and then we'll be right back where we were. But so trying to prevent that let me just like uh, i've noticed that this gets swept under the rug this particular part of it and the last thing that i do is sweep things under the rug so uh pulling it out into the open in this instance the number one thing that i want to pay attention here and uh, draw attention to is the o3 scores on the arc agi1 compared to the arc agi2 which is the version one of the test and version two of the test and then up front, <clears throat> what has come out since the version one release of this test is that OpenAI very specifically had access to this Arc AGI one. They paid for it, uh, and like they didn't tell anyone. They buried it in the media until like a long time afterwards, right? <laughs> and then they kind of just blew over afterwards. But so. As you can see here, uh, on the ARC AGI one, the human passing is ninety eight percent, whereas like the like average human is the like sixty four point two percent. The top human is ninety eight percent. Average human passing is sixty four point two, and then they clock O uh, three low with a chain of thought plus search like all of its deep seeking information at seventy five point seven. So clocking out over human levels, right? Uh, and then you've got uh, without about fifty percent, and then um, it goes down from there, right? O three mini thirty five R one it's fifteen GPT four point five ten. So you can see the difference between models trained or exposed to this data set in some way versus models not, right? And then how do I know that? Because let's look at the Arc AGI two. So Arc O uh, three low with all of that stuff on it goes from a seventy five point seven percent to a 4%, and then O1 Pro goes from 50% to 1%. And then this is with spending $200 worth of compute. That's the funny thing within this, right? Like they flat out, it's like uh, they take the API version and then they're having a like deep think for like $200 worth of data. And it's getting 4% and 1% on this test between 03 and 01 comparatively. And then so what exactly is this test? The test is uh, straightforward overall. It's hard to understand, right? <laughs> like if you're looking at this test for the first time, it might throw you off a little bit. So again, remember like average human passing on this is like 60%. But so uh, what it is, is you have like different shapes and, and images like in, in these instances. And then you just figure out like what the next pattern is like this one that we're looking at here i can tell you simplicity it's to, to organize them if you don't know right uh, and it's not laid out that way and that's kind of what it's uh what makes this test intuitive right but so if you notice if you look at uh like the a to b and then a to b well you, like it's it's just grouping them right so it's like the the blue on the right and the, the red on the or the blue on the left red on the right and then same thing with this top one blue on the left red on the right so that's what it's supposed to do <laughs> like nothing weird right but it's uh, presented in a like I like this test right because it's presented in a way that will make you think it's more complicated than that and then so once you understand that that then all of these ones uh, to me become easier it's like okay I understand what you're supposed to do within these right like how I like it's just in this one it's just fitting them together right um, and then but so easy overall for a human to pass but as we can see without any sort of like uh, uh, exposure to the test set four percent and one percent and then these are like our our top of the line models right uh, and then there's been um a research paper that is like very prominent in the research community i love talking about this paper pre-training on the test set is all you need comes out in september 2023 uh, and then very specifically, they prove these things out, right? Um, and it's like very simply that if you just, <laughs> they take like essentially like a, uh, a 1 million parameter model uh, and then they train it directly on like the, like uh, one of the tests, not AGI, but one of the, like another benchmark test and they get it to beat every single other model in existence with a 1 million parameter model. Uh, and then it just it beats scaling laws and like they rock it out they do everything right like and they show that like this you can utilize all of these tactics to cheat the training set and uh, the test set as long as you have it 
as part of your pre-training curriculum. And then uh, so many people think that like OpenAI still think this, that like OpenAI has stuff up their sleeves, right? <laughs> that they're, uh, they're going to just like whip something out out of the blue. But like, I mean, their tactic was pretty straightforward to me, right? Their tactic was like, okay, it's going to take uh, like a while for people to, to figure this out. Um, and then like they didn't anticipate like a deep seek coming in and in, in between there uh, and then just like <laughs> blowing their, their uh, entire like essence out of the water uh, as a result of that. But that's kind of the bottom line that I see that happen within this, right? It's very straightforward to me is that uh, they were going to continue doing tests like this uh, and then releasing data like this and then saying our models are better than everyone else. Um, and then there would be, you know, like uh, it would be them or pure open source models uh, to like compete against. <laughs> and then as you can see, uh, and then if they're the only ones that have access to the data set, right, they're, the, they're like the only ones that paid for the ARC AGI-1 data set. I, like, it was kind of like kind of scandalous when it came out. But again, like it, it came out like six months after the ARC AGI-1 was released. So it was smart on their end, right, because they essentially like were able to uh, bury any sort of controversy before it came out overall because they made sure that it was like far delayed out but two hundred dollars for four percent on this test and two hundred dollars for one percent on this test like it's just those numbers don't lie overall right and I, I i can't stress this part of this enough like that so the bottom line is and i sum this up very i try to sum this up as simplistically as i can so transformers like where we started off with ai was uh ai's invented in 1958 by Rosenblatt, the Rosenblatt 58. Then you have the Minsky paper in 1969, which says that the Rosenblatt paper and all of the Rosenblatt research was wrong, that there were critical errors in the Rosenblatt research, that no, this wasn't the way. And then that's what caused AI winter number one, right? People, so I think a lot of people don't fully understand that disconnect from basically jump within this community, right? <laughs> Essentially, you have uh, Rosenblatt, who's like, it's um, parameters based off of the human, what was thinking of the human brain, et cetera. Uh, here's the perceptron model, um, yada, yada, yada. And then it ends up like uh, Minsky is like, no, all of that is wrong. <laughs> that doesn't work. Then as a result, you get multi-layer perceptron, you get gradient descent, you get back propagation, you get an activation function. You start getting all of this stuff added to make Rosenblatt's model work, but it was never what Rosenblatt put out. And so we've just been stacking on top of research that doesn't exist ever since. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Like if you go back to the 1958 research and the 1960, like uh, if you go back to any research pre-1986, it's 100% absolutely worthless when it comes to like the, the current transformer architecture and current architecture as to like what anyone is working with. If you're talking about like pure transformer, there's one little sliver that you uh, of that, that model that you can still get some sort of benefit of of looking at pre-1986 research. But flat out, anything pre-1986, you're throwing out. Anything pre, like, early 2000s, you're you're really throwing out, right? Which is, like, a huge problem. Like, And that's why, like, you're within that, you're throwing out swarm algorithms, genetic algorithms, et cetera, because they're not um, applicable with the transformer train, like, in the transformer angle, right? Those, like swarm algorithms, genetic algorithms, all of this, it's, so you have AI winter after 1969, and then you have the AI winter two in the mid 1990s, because of that's when you have the introduction of swarm algorithms, genetic algorithms, etc. The problem that people didn't understand with them then that they do now is that they, those models benefit like bonkers and ridiculous with parallel computing. Whereas parallel computing was a Star Trek concept in the 1990s when these algorithms came out. So people use them. Oh uh, yeah, they're, they're garbage on a, on a um, Pentium 4, right? And they're like, they're not going to work because a Pentium 4 doesn't do parallel computing. Um, and then so people just threw them out. Uh, and then now like 20 years later, Later, it's a different story, right? But then again, you have that other architecture that has built up in that meantime. And then that leaves us here with this article that we're looking at. Um, and then 
so prediction, human level AI is just a few miracles away. And in this particular article, like the way that the gentleman states it, like uh, he gets even questioned by the article, right? Like it's like you, you miracles, and he says yes, like it's it's miracles, right? Like it's it's that's exactly what I mean by what I'm saying when I say miracles. I think we're about three to five miracles away when it comes to human level AI, and like people don't understand that, like they just want to like wipe over that equation, pretend it doesn't exist. Uh, like, I, I don't know, <laughs> right? Like, I, I, like, these are like people at the very top of the research framing it in this particular way, utilizing this particular word and these partic this particular wording uh, within this, right? And then it's like, why would they do that? It's because that's exactly where we're at. And then so that's where everyone is at across the board. And then if everyone is that across the board, open AI doesn't have a moat, right? You can put a bunch of, like, you devote all of the uh, engineering power that you want into this, but this isn't an engineering problem at this point. It's a physics problem. And then it's, um, like, uh, engineers aren't always the best at physics overall. <laughs> Just laying that out, right? Like, uh, computer science is not directly related to physics, um, as we see time and time again. And then, uh, as we see here, right, um, so the, what are the miracles that people are predicting? They're in the realm of physics, flat out. Like, what like what miracles need to occur? Physics miracles need to occur. Uh, that's why everyone is, is going so hard on that path, right? If you think that this is true, that this is a reality, that this can happen, that we can actually overcome these things, you're betting 100% on physics miracles. You're betting 100% that we're going to solve physics in areas that we haven't been able to right now. And maybe you might be right with that. I'm not saying that you're wrong in that because the the other side of this equation is is that the more that we're, we kind of brute force this up the more physics breakthroughs we do make right and then like um there is uh kind of something to be said about brute force it does work if you just throw a bunch of money at it and to an extent right um and then the gamble becomes is that extent good enough and we're we're still perhaps three to five miracles away, right? So uh, is that a good enough point to just dump trillions of dollars into a brute force to figure out those three to five miracles? Perhaps. I, I would feel more confident if it was like one or two miracles left, right? But like, uh, I, like I think that it's the potential is there. What you see within, um, to me, the way that I frame this out very simplistically is that I think you've seen more physics breakthroughs over the past year than you have over the past like 30 years before that. If you pay attention to like actual physics and what is going on, um, like in the physics community, like there's actually like huge amounts of movement around all these things. So perhaps, uh, we will, right. But like the, um, physics community moves very slow, like academia and all of that moves like at a snail's pace, right? <laughs> Even if someone, has already cracked this. It already exists in the world. It still needs to go through publication, peer review, like a bunch of stuff. Like, like, so like, even if like I'm making this video and someone already solved all of these things yesterday in their basement, right? We're still two to three years out from them even being mainstreamed in their concepts. And I think like a lot of people miss every single one of these aspects overall. Right. But so I just want to make this to uh, highlight point these things out and then like the bottom line to me like i want to like point a big finger at open ai for this right there's no like i don't know why why people just let them get away with this or like like uh no other model is at uh, least scores like and um, like with these types of um differentials and then like uh no other model or no other company had paid access to the arc agi one uh test set which was like again it ended up being a big controversy because it was supposed to be like uh undiluted test set right and then it ended up like a lot of stuff was around that but so i'll leave that there um and then so uh, overall if you like this type of content please like and subscribe thank you very much